All right, I want to thank everybody for coming out this evening. Um, there, you know, there's a lot of places that we could be. Anybody got chores at the house that still needs to get done? Okay. Well, you know, so we could be home doing that. But I want to appreciate everybody taking time out of their busy day, their busy schedule to come to the church to learn about God's Word and spend time with fellow Christians. I just think that is so important. Um, I spent my time with the heathens. Um, was one of them. And looking back on it, I really don't want to spend a lot of time with the heathens. Now, that being said, I'm not saying don't talk to those that are not Christians. I'm not saying that. I just don't have any desire to hang out with them for hours on end doing stuff that doesn't serve a single purpose in life. Um, but I think spending time with fellow Christians, I think there is purpose behind that. I think there is value in that. I think there's power in that. Um, if nothing else, we can pray for each other. We have a chance to do that. So let us open in prayer this evening, if we could, please. Dear Heavenly Most Gracious Father, we give you thanks, honor, and praise, dear Lord, for all that you are and all that you have blessed us with. Lord, you have blessed us mightily as individuals. You have brought each one of us here this evening, dear Lord, to hear your word, to praise your name, and to lay our burdens down at the foot of the cross, dear Lord. Lord, I just want to thank you for, for sending Jesus Christ to, the, to Calvary to die for my sins, for the sins that I should be paying for when I think about the, uh, the, the price I should be paying for uh, those sins, dear Lord. It, it, it practically scares me half to death. But you, you gave us a way through your son Jesus Christ and the shedding of his blood that all we have to do is to make Jesus Christ the Lord of our lives, and that we can have everlasting life with you in heaven. Lord, I just pray, dear Lord, that this message tonight will be powerful, that we'll take it to heart, and that maybe it'll change somebody's life, maybe here in the congregation, maybe some, someone on YouTube that's going to watch this, dear Lord. Lord, I just pray that the words that I will speak here are your words that you have given me, dear Lord, and I just pray, dear Lord, that we'll each take it into our hearts. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. So what is the most powerful force on earth? Okay, don't listen to him yet. Most powerful force on earth. Come on, people, work with me. Tornado, thank you very much. He likes to play along. Anybody else? We got any Marines in here? Well, I'm just asking. Okay, we got one over here. You give this man a beach full of sand, he's going to, he can be an aggressive marine. They love the sand. What about a mama grizzly protecting her cub? All right, very powerful. What about the daddy whose daughter brings home her boyfriend? He's got blue hair, bone in his nose, and, and greets you with, what's up, dude? Yeah, you want to talk about a powerful force, daddy's about ready to come unglued. Somebody needs a dog too, yeah. But prayer, whoever said God, prayer to the believer is the most powerful force we have on earth. Through prayer, we can unleash power like you couldn't imagine. That, that non-believers, have they don't have that access to it. But we do, anytime we want to go to God in prayer, we have access to that power. Ian McPherson tells his following story. The person concerned is a scientist, a man who had been almost a devout atheist, doing research work in a pathological laboratory, along with other doctors, he attempted to find the wavelength of the human brain. They discovered a whole channel of wavelengths, and each channel had so much room that the different wavelengths of each individual brain is further separated in identity than the fingerprints on each individual's hand. The scientist wanted to experiment to discover what took place in the human brain at the moment of transition from life until death. I'm not sure why it matters, but we'll find out. A lady was selected who had a disease of the brain. This disease affected the balance of the body, but in every other way, she is exceptionally brilliant. But her family didn't want the trouble of, take, of caring for her, and being on the point of death, she was accepted as a patient in the research hospital. The necessary wires were connected to her room to ascertain what would take place. A small microphone about the size of a penny was installed in case she had anything to say. Five scientists were grouped in an adjoining room, five tough, hardened men of science. One of the instruments they watched had a needle pointing to zero in the center. To the right, the scale registered 500 points negative, uh, I'm sorry, positive. To the left, 500 points negative. Previously, the same instrument had registered the power used by a 50 kilowatt broadcasting station to sending a message around the world. 
that needle had registered nine points positive. As a la at the last moment of this woman's earthly life arrived, she began to pray out loud and praise God. She asked him to be merciful to those who had spitefully used her. Then she told God how much she loved him and was looking forward to seeing him face to face. The scientists had been so engrossed in this prayer, an unexpected situation, that they had forgotten their experiment. They looked at each other's tears screaming down their face. Suddenly they heard a clicking sound and turning to their instruments found that this particular instrument was registering a positive 500 and desperately trying to go higher. By actual instrumentation, these scientists had recorded that the wave, the brain of a woman, alone and dying in communication with God, had registered more than 55 times the power used by a 50 kilowatt station in sending a message around the world. If ever there was proof of the power of prayer, surely that is it from a scientific standpoint, if nothing else. Now think about that. That's power. I mean, most scientists, they believe in facts, things that they can prove. They proved the power of prayer. And Jesus said that this power can be ours. If we look at John 15, 7, If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, if ye shall ask what ye will, it shall be done unto you. If we abide, take up continual residence in Christ, does it, it doesn't say, you know, what a, uh, if you abide in me when it's convenient to you, when you need something. That's what so many people do. I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. We're, we're all guilty of it. We're all guilty of it. You know, uh, things are good. What do I need God for? Things get bad. Lord Jesus, help me now. You know, when, when, instead of when things are going good, Lord, thank you. Thank you for making this day easy. Nothing came against me. Nothing attacked me. Life is good. My family's healthy. I've got a job. Maybe a job that I like. We need to be able to go to God, not just for things that we need. That's what most people think when they talk about prayer. You know, do you pray? Yeah, you know, my, my, my wife was sick and I prayed for her. What? How's she doing now? Oh, she was healed. Did you thank God? You know, and that's one of the, you, th you think he's got to get tired up there sometimes going, look, I deliver what I said I'm going to do, and you don't even give me a thank you. Sometimes I think he's up there shaking his head. So what is prayer? What is this lifeline to God? What is this channel of spiritual power? We want to consider prayer under three headings. Prayer is speaking, prayer is listening, and prayer as a way of life. 